What's going on y'all? Today we're going to talk about five things not to do while kayak fishing. These are mistakes that a lot of people make. It's not just mistakes that beginners do. Uh, but if y'all would go in the comment section below, let me know what y'all think the number one mistake that kayakers make and see if it's something that I cover here today. So the first mistake that kayak anglers make is going to be uh, fishing outside of your comfort level. Now this does pertain a lot to beginner kayakers. Uh, we know that kayak fishing is, is interesting, it's new, and, uh, and people want to go out there and they want to do it. And a lot of times, you know, uh, you get out there and the wind's blowing worse than we expected or the waves are crashing at the beach a lot harder than what we thought. And instead of just calling it and saying, hey, you know what, today's not the best day for this, uh, they decide to, to go out there and give it a shot anyways. I've seen a lot of guys launch their kayak off the beach and end up getting into the breakers. They roll their kayak and a, a lot of times they lose thousands of dollars worth of gear, uh, broken fish finders, rods at the bottom, uh, all this different stuff and they end up just losing all this gear. But not to mention, you could go offshore and not have a lot of experience and you know get yourself caught in a bad situation, a storm roll up on you. There's a whole lot of bad things that can happen. So if you haven't gained that experience to, to be able to go out there and go offshore and know what to do uh, when currents change, winds pick up, storms roll in, uh, then it's best just to kind of stick to it, what you're used to, fish some lakes, fish some inshore stuff, and stay away from the beach. I myself went out to, uh, to Jacksonville. And if you've never been on the East Coast, the currents out there are insane. I mean, we're talking five foot tide swings uh, every six hours. It's moving a lot of water. And you get up in some of those rivers and, and creeks around the St. John's and that tide starts to dump out, you can find yourself in a bad situation uh, very quickly. Me as an experienced angler, I had to call my buddy Sean uh, to come help me one time because I got caught in a really, really bad current with my power pole down and it was wedging my power pole in a position to where it didn't have enough power to pick it back up because the current was so strong. Being able to build up the experience, knowing what to do in those situations goes a long way in keeping you safe on the water. So number two is not wearing your PFD. There's a lot of times I see people out there on the water, they're not wearing their PFD. I always stop them and say, hey man, where's your PFD at? You know, what's going on, this, that, and the other. And a lot of times they tell me, oh, it's under my seat or it's in my hatch. And I get it, the Coast Guard says that that's an approved method uh, to, to keep your PFD, you know, as long as it's on your vessel. Time and time again, we see where kayakers fall overboard and they end up being a statistic and drowning because they were not wearing their PFD. If your PFD is under your seat or in your hatch and you fall off your kayak and you have a lot of current, you know, if you get separated from that kayak, there went your PFD right there. You no longer have anything to keep you afloat. You know, and, and even if you are on your kayak and you fall overboard, being able to get in your hatch, like me being a Hobie Pro Angler, I don't think I could open my hatch against the water pressure, pull it down while it's underwater to be able to get my PFD out of there. Same thing if it's under my seat, I have to manipulate myself in a manner in which to go under my kayak, grab my PFD, hopefully it doesn't get hung on stuff, uh, and it just creates a really bad situation. Uh, in my opinion, uh, your PFD should be worn at all times. I've been kayaking for 10 years. I always wear my PFD. And the number one thing I can say about this is go out, spend the money on a PFD that you're going to be comfortable wearing. Buy a PFD that you love wearing. Maybe one that allows you to sort your gear out, keep your pliers, your snips, and knives and things on you that, that makes it to where you're a more efficient angler. If you have a comfortable PFD uh, that, that is a part of your, your everyday tackle and wear, you're going to be more likely to wear that PFD and want to wear it. So buy a PFD that you love and make sure y'all are wearing it. So getting into number three, this is all about pedal drive kayaks. If you're in a paddle kayak, y'all can go ahead and skip to number four because it really doesn't pertain to y'all. But all the time I get out there, whether I'm doing charters or just out there on the water, and I see people who are in pedal drive kayaks 
and they're flagging me down and saying, hey man, can you help me get back to shore? I broke my drive or my rudder went out and I don't have a paddle. A lot of times people think, well, I got a pedal drive. I don't need a paddle. I'll launch right here on the dock, go out and I'll be fine, right? You gotta have, especially with all the mechanical stuff that goes into a pedal drive kayak, you got cables and rudders and all this stuff. Trust me when I tell you that all of that stuff breaks. If it's on a kayak, I've broken it before. Uh, and you don't wanna be out there and get stranded without having some way to get yourself back to shore. You never know, this kind of plays back on number one, but you never know when a storm pops up on you and you're sitting out there waiting on somebody to come by and save you uh, because you have no way to move your kayak. So number three is all about keeping your paddle on your kayak, even if you're in a pedal drive kayak, make sure you have a way to get back to shore. Getting into number four, don't wear waders on your kayak. Now, obviously it being summer, I don't know of anybody that's out there wearing waders right now, but we're closely approaching fall time and winter. Your water temperatures are gonna really start to drop. And there are people out there who wear waders to keep them dry in their kayak. First of all, waders are not comfortable. Like I don't know who wants to wear waders while they're sitting up and fishing. You got a lot of uh, whether they're neoprene or rubber waders and they're just pulling against you and kind of it's just it's they're uncomfortable right so i don't know who would want to wear waders there's a lot of comfortable good uh cold weather fishing gear out there available to you people wear waders in the winter time to keep the water off of them but here's the deal uh if you were to flip your kayak and you were wearing rubber waders right the first thing that's going to happen when you flip that kayak the pressure from that water is gonna cause those waders to suck to you. If any of y'all have ever worn waders, duck hunting or flounder gigging or anything like that, when you're walking in just two, three foot of water, those waders really suck to your legs, right? So when you fall over your kayak, you're not just gonna be able to slip out of your waders. Uh, the next thing that's gonna happen is they're gonna fill up with water. So when they begin to fill up with water, A, the pressure doesn't allow you to get the waders off of you and B, they're filling up with water and they're gonna sink you down to the bottom. Even if you're only fishing in four or five foot of water, your waders fill up with water, it's gonna be hard to stand and uh, it's just gonna create a really dangerous situation. So trust me, do not wear waders when you're out there on the water. Uh, buy you a good set of bibs. Um, you know, they don't have to be a set of Sims or something high dollar like that. Columbia makes a good set of bibs. Uh, you got a lot of good brands out there. Uh, you can get a good brand of, of Academy H2O Express bibs that are like $100 a piece. They're the same cost as waders. They keep the water off of you. They're more comfortable. Wear those. Do not wear waders. Getting into number five, and this is the number one thing that I see most people doing out there on a kayak, and it's simply taking too much crap out there on their kayak. I mean, it, I see kayaks that are completely loaded down with gear. I've seen people take two ice chests, one for their food and drinks, and then one for their fish. Uh, I've seen people take these huge tackle boxes with, with everything in them, um, 12 rod and reels, just all this different stuff. I've even seen somebody take a propane heater out there in wintertime. I won't say Mark's name, but uh, I myself am guilty of, of taking too much gear sometimes, especially during tournaments. But when I first started kayak fishing, it was almost like I was competing to see how much crap I could put on my kayak versus the next person. You're taking away from your stability on your kayak. The more weight that kayak weighs, the, the more stability that you're gonna lose. It's gonna cause you to use a lot more effort to get that, that kayak to move. Obviously, the more it weighs, the more uh, water that's grabbing onto your kayak and the more effort you have to put into getting that kayak to go forward. So um, you're gonna be a lot more tired at the end of the day. And let's just face it, a lot of the crap that you're putting on your kayak, you don't use anyways, it's just there, it's just extra weight. One of the turning points for me in, in kayak fishing, especially when I got into tournaments and, and getting around, is um, that I realized that I was taking so much stuff that I didn't need and uh, I really you know, narrowed my gear, my tackle down to the essentials. I stopped taking all that stuff with me. I was able to travel a lot further, a lot faster, cover a lot more water, and overall, at the end of the day, I was a lot less tired. 
Um, so you do have a safety aspect there with you know you being weighed down more you have a better opportunity of flipping given that uh, the wind and weather picks up or maybe a boat throws some wake at you and you know you get put in a position to where you're just slightly off balance but because your kayak is heavy it causes your kayak to go ahead and flip over uh, so you do have a little bit of safety stuff there but also overall you're just going to uh, over exert yourself at the end of the day because you got 200 pounds of gear on your kayak when you only need 20 or 30 pounds of extra gear and getting into number six so this is the last uh, mistake or I'd rather call this a tip than a mistake okay uh, but if you're new to kayaking or even been kayaking for a while don't forget to join Facebook groups um, here in Mobile we got the Mobile Bay Kayak Fishing Association it is a great organization that is full of nothing but kayak anglers and you can always find buddies to go out there on the water with um, getting into kayak fishing I'm guilty of this uh, but you, you really need to you know develop a buddy system of always having people around you people to go out there and kayak fish uh, with you know somebody that can bail you out if you get in that bad situation maybe you do forget your paddle back in your truck and your drive brakes on you and you need somebody to help you get back to the launch or you know it can be as simple as you getting leg cramps or you know something tearing in your shoulder if you're paddling and you tear a shoulder and you start to get a medical situation uh, or it could be as extreme and, and silly to believe but maybe a snake crawls in the back of your kayak and bites you who knows crazy things happen you know you're out there kayak fishing around alligators snakes sharks stingrays fish with teeth um, there's all these crazy things that can happen uh, you know but but even going into a more a really serious note is uh, I'm not going to name any names here but um, there's a, a buddy of mine that was down in South Florida and runs one of the biggest kayak charters down there. Very, very successful guy. Here this summer, he was out offshore and um, he had clients with him. He was taking a charter out and he had a seizure on his kayak. So his clients ended up getting him back to the beach and calling the paramedics. And it was a really scary situation, but because he had other anglers right there, they essentially saved him. I mean, if he, he was out there by himself, there's no telling what would have happened there. Um, and, and it could have turned into a tragedy. So joining Facebook groups, uh, you're, you're going to be able to link up with a lot of people. Every week, people are on there asking, hey, I'm going out here. I'm going fishing. You know, anybody want to go with me? And it's your opportunity to, A, uh, go out there with other people but also to explore new areas. You know, maybe there's somebody on the other side of the state in a place where you've been wanting to fish, but you don't know where to go. And here this guy is saying, hey, look, I'm going to launch over here today. Anybody want to go with me? And you get that opportunity to explore new water and, uh, and meet new friends. So definitely join your Facebook groups, link up with people, and get out there on the water. So those were my six things not to do while kayak fishing. I hope these things were helpful uh, and help you navigate yourself into the right direction uh, and not making these mistakes, being safe out there on the water. Uh, if y'all would, hit that like button, comment with any questions, subscribe if you haven't already. We'll see y'all next time.